tonight I'm really I'm pleased to introduce Laurie Cameron. Um, she has 25 years of international management and consulting uh, leadership experience. She's got this amazing passion for creativity, transformation and human development, um, and is dedicated to helping people learn mindfulness uh, to live with meaning and lead with purpose-driven performance. She's a former Accenture management consultant and business executive. She's a published author and a TED talker. So I'm really happy to introduce Laurie tonight. We have some prepared questions that we're going to be asking her and I'll let Dr. Dustis kind of interview her, but I also uh, want to um, let all of you who are listening tonight know that you'll have an opportunity to ask some questions as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing so that you all can see the screen and the faces a little bit better. Um, and move forward with that. Welcome, Laurie. So it's great to be here. Um, as Kirsten said, I um, I really work at the intersection of business, change management, leadership, organization strategy, and that's all fueled with mindfulness. So I've been in the field of leadership development and business for over 25 years with uh, more than 10 years at Accenture. And then I went in industry and worked at uh, e-commerce startup, Fort Point Partners, uh, William Sonoma. I had I headed up leadership and learning there, and Blue Shield of California out in San Francisco. Um, and I've lived in a couple of different continents along the way, and that was really helpful in helping me start to deepen my self awareness and understand my cultural conditioning and the ways I interpret what's happening and how that informs decisions and experiences and all of that. And along the way, while I was a consultant, I um, living out in, uh, in California in the East Bay, I had a client, um, the energy company in San Ramon. And while I was working there with Accenture, my client introduced me to mindfulness. And that was 25 years ago. And she, she taught me, she's an engineer from G Vietnam, Vietnam, that on demand, no matter what's happening around, that we have the capacity to, to deliberately direct attention inward to activate, you know, to access calm and peace and mental clarity, to relax the body so we can see more possibility. And we have the capacity to better understand our mind. And um, I continued with Accenture. I worked in industries. I started training in mindfulness around the world at monasteries. And then um, I, I started my own company because I started to see the power of helping my clients learn not just strategies, frameworks, blueprints, all the best practices that I've been sharing with them for so many years, but almost before we can work on the outer deliverables and organize our stakeholders in the ecosystem, it's really essential that we start with what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. So in the work I do, and, and I'll just wrap up my intro, but I, I focus on leading the self and then leading the organization or leading what's around. So, um, it's been quite a joy. So my I, my clients, I have a company called Purpose Blue, and we're the partners to Deloitte, um, KPMG, Talis is a big manufacturing company. I'm a professor at in the uh, MBA school at, Uni at University of Maryland Smith School of Business, and I'm delighted to be part of the team here at UC Davis. So it's really a it's really a delight. I know mindfulness has transformed my life quite profoundly and the bottom line is i'm able to do what i want to do you know the my to-do list um my big dreams my doing the laundry washing the dishes uh, hanging out with my teenager publishing a book with national geographic it doesn't matter how small or big i'm moving through moment by moment with less stress less suffering and more joy and that's really that's the bottom line. <laughs> That's really what's what's exciting. Lori, thank you. That's terrific, terrific intro. And I, I just had a couple questions, and we'll open up to to the group. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And I couldn't agree more. And this is an element we added this year uh, because we felt that given 
all that's been happening in the world, it was, it was even more relevant. I think it's probably always been relevant. Um, having said that, if I were to play devil's advocate, you know, sometimes people say, yeah, but boy, if I'm, you know, doing mindfulness work, it's gonna, you know, take time away from my life. It's gonna make me, you know, so calm, I'm not gonna have my creative edge. So how, you know, love, love just to hear how mindfulness, um, your mindfulness work with companies and individuals and companies has actually helped um, make people more effective or more profitable or, or um, able to transform their organizations. Love to hear a couple of examples. Thank you. Thanks for those, the devil's advocate questions. I think they're so important to tee up. Um, I'll take, uh, I'll take the one about um, will it make me too quiet or calm or, you know, I need, I need my drive. I need to get up and go. And then I'll take the, then I'll go in part B and I'll talk about creativity and innovation. Um, the research on mindfulness in the workplace, so I'll just start with the data, shows that mindfulness, um, when participants that go through these research programs experience it, 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 eight week um, eight week mindfulness programs. So that's distributed over time. This is where the initial study started. And then we tested uh, these, these were these groups relative to groups that have had no mindfulness training, but maybe they had, you know, um, cognitive behavioral therapy training or um, other types of training. So they're in similar conditions, but without learning how to strengthen attention and awareness, these are the fundamental skills. We see that three things are, in, are increased, performance, relationships, and well-being. And the, there was a meta-analysis across all the research done at Mindfulness in the Workplace by Tang and his team down at University of Austin, Texas. And, and it's really fascinating. It's really powerful to see how mindfulness does that. So you talked about um, you know, the fear of I've got so much to do and I, you know, I don't, I don't need to be calm. I need to get my stuff done. And what mindfulness does is actually help us focus in the midst of chaos and overwhelm. And when we don't have that capacity to pause in the midst of all the incoming and take a step back and then, and calm the mind, we're much less effective in, in doing what we need to do and doing so with quality. So it's actually those little micro moments of calmness that help us reset and recenter. I actually teach a three breath reset micro practice to the, the leaders in the organizations that I work with. And I use it all the time myself. And that allows me when I'm juggling a lot of clients, when I've got a, you know a difficult, challenge that's kind of on the back burner when my teenager needs me i'm able to pause set recenter and then and then move forward with effectiveness so what happens interestingly is we end up saving a lot of time so it's sort of you know counterintuitive like i don't have time to sit for five minutes and breathe have you seen the length of my to-do list but we find that actually we get more work done. The other, the other piece about that is when my mind is operating like a shaken snow globe, right? When, when thoughts and to do's and emotions, and I'm, we have a mind that, that our default mode network of the brain is one that tends to be self-referential and obsessive. So if my mind is left to its own devices, it's gonna be replaying and worrying and working through stuff. And if I can set that snow globe down for a minute or two, allowing thoughts and emotions and worries to settle, then I'm able to approach my next, next task with clarity. So it's really cool. The relationship piece is really big. So the work that I do uh, with Google Search Inside Yourself and my company Purpose Blue is mindfulness-based emotional intelligence. So mindfulness helps us deepen self-awareness, understanding thoughts, emotions as they're arising. And it helps us navigate what to do with those emotions when they're arising. So this is incredibly powerful because when we don't have that insight into our internal experience, 
we're, we're driving our decisions and behaviors and communications almost blindly. Our emotions are driving them, but we're not conscious of it. So we're teaching those skills. And I could go on and on. You could see I just cannot wait to have uh, the classroom full of your folks at UC Davis because it's just so cool. But to give you a little taste, self-awareness, self-management, understanding others, mindfulness fuels empathy and compassion, and relationship management are these skills that we learn to do better, which dramatically increases collaboration and engagement. And this links to productivity. So we have a lot of data from uh, work at SAP, the giant German software firm and based in, um, in Germany, but they're global. And it's really amazing to see the ROI. And I didn't answer the creativity piece, but I'm happy to. I want to pause and see where you want to go next. You know what I might, might do um, is ask, because I, I have many questions for you, but I want to make sure we, we have time for, for participant questions. So I'd love to, love to um, open that up for, for that. I'm thinking, by the way, I want to bring my teenagers to this session, because that not only will help me, but might actually help them. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I do a lot of sessions for teenagers and um, some of, you know, even I, I wanted to tell you guys that my book, The Mindful Day, which I wrote for adults, um, a lot of high schoolers have gotten their hands on it and, and written me letters. And I wanted to tell you that right now on Audible, the book is free. I just found out. So those of you who have Audible can download that. And it's easy for teens to listen to. It's amazing how savvy teens are getting about self-awareness, emotional intelligence, and positive psychology. That's great. And by the way, did you do you narrate the book? I do. Mm -hmm. ah, wonderful. That's wonderful. I had to try out for that. Uh, <laughs> there's that, that question in the chat. I just submit sample tapes. <laughs> yeah, but it is. It is relaxing just to hear you speak, Laurie. So I was hoping that you were the narrator. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I feel relaxed already, which is wonderful. Uh, there was a question in chat. I don't know if you can see that, that um, Laurie. But when you were abroad, was it work related? And, um, and what did you learn as, uh, from, from that experience? And then also another I'll, person- I'll hold up the book oh, and Great. I'll answer uh, Tang's question. So it's called The Mindful Day and it was published by National Geographic. Thank you for asking. Um, when I was abroad, I was asked by Accenture when I lived in San Francisco to move down to Sao Paulo, Brazil to start a change management practice for South America. So it was work related. I moved down there with my brand new husband. We were married three weeks and we moved to Brazil. And it was absolutely, you know, the adventure of a lifetime. So work and life, I always integrate those. And it was really exciting. I learned, um, I learned how to, I, probably my, one of my favorite things I learned was the jeitinho. That's the Brazilian word for finding a workaround. And we were in Brazil and we were helping uh, bring in the German software SAP to major organizations and industries. And if you try to import software or hardware or anything into the country at the time, it was very difficult. Things were getting held up and currency was fluctuating wildly all the time. And all the problems that we you know, the challenges we used to have in business in the U.S. that we thought were so mind-blowingly hard paled in comparison to the challenge of implementing something in Brazil and managing the change. And the Brazilians taught me to, you know, get out of my head, get out of the spreadsheets, get out of the roadmaps and work plans, and drop into the body and connect with each other as humans. And I think that's really, really key in life. To, we often get really driven, especially when we're triggered and stressed and overwhelmed and living in chronic anxiety, uh, uncertainty like we are now in this pandemic. And when we get like that, it's a, it's a very somatic body-based experience and it shuts down our capacity to think clearly. And it, we tend to withdraw and avoid from others. So in the culture of Brazil, they, uh, the Jeitinho is, is finding a way around and the belief that we will find a way around. 
and and to end every day with a barbecue and a cerveza and some good music and that really kind of like turned my whole head around i was a you know dr i was a, like a you know study hard in school work very hard in my professional life and i think the brazil lesson was life-changing too oh, i also lived in europe for seven years <laughs> after that that was a totally different culture went from brazil to germany <laughs> <laughs> i have to laugh at that that is a really different end of the spectrum in terms of cultural values and norms where the trains run on time and in brazil like nothing's on time and everyone ex expects it and in germany everything's on time and i kind of fall in the middle so that was a challenge <laughs> But I learned about adapting to cultures and starting to question my own assumptions and beliefs. That's when the, the my mindfulness practice helped me see self-awareness and how I'm navigating life. And that was a really beautiful, powerful lesson. Germans are fantastic at, at one of my favorite mindfulness practices, which is pausing and savoring beauty, wonder, and awe. And the research in positive psychology is savoring beauty you know that's where our you know classical music comes from i was listening to beethoven today that's really um where we get those daily micro hits of joy that offset the challenge so each culture taught me something really powerful so i'm gonna um uh i know there's we could we could keep going on and i i see there's one one more question here and then we probably should um, start to wrap up a little bit. I don't know if you'd be willing, Laurie, to share your um, your website or other other contact information because um, I, I think um, you are all getting a sense of the the caliber of the speakers. That's really the goal of having Laurie join join us here, which is you know you and to somebody's question uh, earlier, which is to say you know you don't need to read Laurie's book, but she's going to give you those resources and help make uh, the um, ideas um, actionable for you in your work. So you don't have to scan everywhere. We, 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 you know, Kirsten and Christy and Bridget and I have been working for months to pull the very best speakers and the very best people to use your time um, mo most effectively. Um, so I don't know, um, Lori, do you want to just take that last question that was in chat and then we better uh, probably wrap up just sure, to keep everybody. Can, uh, it was about, if you can read it to me, it, my screen it, came. So. It was really a, around um, what you recommend uh, as a daily practice. Um, you know, that, that the idea that, that, you know, some people practice yoga, but do you have a, you know, an easy sort of straightforward uh, recommendation maybe an app or a practice that you found that is um, helpful to people? Um, I do, thank you for the question. I, I've, I believe and the research shows that taking a few minutes a day, and if you can work up to five or 10, even better, but a few minutes in stillness, bringing your attention to your breath simply following the inhale and the exhale of the breath has profound changes to the physiology of the body and um, it allows us to calm and quiet the mind in addition and it may be even more powerful it strengthens our capacity to see where our mind is and what it's doing so not only do you get the benefit of the beautiful reset just by taking a few minutes for mindful breathing, but you also get the benefit of rewiring the default patterns in your brain so that your brain is more easy. It's more easy to access that, that calm clarity throughout the day. It's like muscle memory, but in the brain. And so that practice is called mindful breathing. Um, an app, my favorite app is Insight Timer. Calm is a nice app as well. Um, in the Insight Timer app, it has 18 million people on it now around the world, and it's free. So Calm, you need us uh, to, to buy that, but Insight Timer you can access for free. And I'm on the Insight Timer app, and I've got a number of meditations 
with different that map to the different competencies in emotional intelligence mm. and they're two minutes four minutes six minutes 12 minutes and they're free so i really recommend um, trying that out um, when i teach at the business school at university of maryland a lot of the cohorts will start meditating with me on the app even before the class starts mm. so they're it's sort they sort of get you know they they, they um start to get an experience of what it means to train. It's like mental fitness for the brain. So I, I recommend finding a start with five minutes, find a regular place that you can sit in your house and go to the same place every day, because then you don't have to make decisions in the morning. Where am I going to do it? Hook it to a habit you already have. After I brush my teeth, I'm going to breathe for five minutes. After I walk the dog, I'm going to breathe for five minutes. That makes the uh, that's the research around habit change, and stick with it. Do it for give yourself two weeks, and see what you notice. Mm -hmm.